Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Coach Mo Live, and I'm super excited to introduce you to Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. How are you today? Awesome. Happy to be here. Fantastic. So Jennifer is one of our clients who took the steep climb back in her career, and I want her to tell us her story. Before I get into Jennifer's story, just a little bit, if you haven't seen me or don't know about my work, I am Coach Mo Fall, and I am the founder and creator of the 12-week transformational 12-week program that Jennifer is a graduate of. And it is transforming your soul so that the inside matches the awesome career that you are capable of. And Jennifer, uh, months ago, you saw my ads, you saw stuff about me. Uh, sounds like just exactly when you needed it. So welcome to this wonderful interview. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you were before we met. Yeah, so, um, well, a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm in the medical device industry and uh, spent most of my career in sales and then in training and education roles. Um, I was with a, with a prior company that I took a reload package for, moved to Florida, moved the whole family. Um, it was exciting. Uh, there's sunshine yeah. down here. It wasn't as sunny yeah. in Connecticut. And, um, you know, really excited to take on new responsibilities. I had two departments there, which was sales training and medical education. And uh, needless to say, I arrived and basically the job wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did stick it out. I was there for about two years, uh, got laid off in a, in a merger acquisition or post merger mm -hmm. acquisition deal. Uh, mm -hmm. They said I was two in the box, I meant there was two of me. Yeah. So yeah. that's nice. That's a nice message. But um, anyway, I was looking for another job. And, you know, really what brought me to your program specifically was I felt like at that point, having been laid off, that in itself was a blessing. And I knew that in my head, but I was bringing with me a lot of job trauma. That yeah. particular job was mm -hmm. very traumatic for me. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I was having trouble getting my head back together. I, I felt like during this two year stint, yes. um, I, I kind of lost a piece of my soul, to be honest with you, because there was a lot that was just going on that was not aligned to who I was. There was just a lot of feedback I received. And of course I was a people leader, um, but I was told to, you know, just kind of, I guess, think back to the 1950s. I was told to, you know, not ask a lot of questions in the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, I, I was coming across as maybe a little too assertive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was being yeah. left out of meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told I was being difficult on occasion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in reflecting upon my career, I never really gotten a lot of that feedback mm -hmm. in the past before. I was always you know, going through leadership training programs, learning how to be a leader, becoming a leader, being promoted. Yeah. I was having a yeah. pretty good, um, pretty good run. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was challenging me for me to take the feedback, although I was trying to take the feedback. I'm, I'm open to, you mm -hmm. know, I, I do know I'm not perfect. So that's the good news. Yeah. But I, I was kind of struggling with it because it, it really wasn't lining up. To who I was. So a lot of things had happened, needless to say, and, and I was let go in this uh, post acquisition deal and kind of happy to be let go, but then struggling to figure out mm -hmm. my own worth and what I wanted to do next too. I, I'd been beaten down a little bit and I, I was almost to the point where I was convinced that nobody wanted my expertise. And yeah. um, I didn't know if I wanted to stay in training and education at that point because of, you know, some of the things that had just kind of transpired. Right. And I was interviewing for jobs and just not 100% sure what I wanted to do. My heart didn't feel like I was in it. I'd lost a lot yeah. of just positive energy. I'm typically yeah. a pretty positive person. Um, you know, definitely a go with the flow kind of personality, but I was, I was not being myself. Right. And, um, after about two months of looking and just yo-yoing through interviews, not really feeling like I was getting the right kind of traction with mm -hmm. it. 
Yeah. Um, and I did have a career coach assigned to me through this, you know, severance yeah. package. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. It was that wasn't really kind of doing it for me. Right. Um, you know, they were just basic questions like, what do you want to do next? And that, it wasn't quite getting to the root of my problem. It was very yeah. surface level. Yeah. And so I did appreciate the, you know, the, the free counseling, but it wasn't quite helping mm -hmm. me. So I started to look online, reach out. I really started to feel like mentally I was going into a little bit of a dark place, which I'm not too familiar with the dark place. I, I haven't mm -hmm. gone there that often. So mm -hmm. it was extremely mm -hmm. uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Um, I even went so far as to take a long weekend driving and to go see some old friends and listen to a ton of podcasts and just really trying to figure out what was going on in my head. So yeah. Yeah. needless to say, I came back from that and I did start to do some research and I found, I found Coach Mo online. Um, <laughs> and I started to look at a couple of videos and I, you know, it was at first kind of struck me, it, it was a lot about, you know, finding your soul. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's quite what I just need to find a job, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, yeah, but I did kind of lose a piece of my soul. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I decided to go ahead and do the clarity call. Mm -hmm. And um, that was somewhat enlightening. I, I, I think I cried my way through that um, interview. So great coach mm -hmm. had me on the phone there right. um, because the questions were pretty pointed mm -hmm. and I started to say out loud why yeah. I was struggling so much. It was right. coming out of my mouth. It was kind of shocking yes. um, that I was even in this mental place. And uh, so anyway, towards the end of the call, I, you know, they, we talked about the program and, you know, of course there's a, there's a cost associated with it. And I thought, well, eh, I don't know. I'm going to think about it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, your, your coach was pretty persistent, you know, that I'd made it this far in life. I should probably invest in myself. You know, I had a, a good career ahead of me if I could just focus. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I bit the bullet and I went ahead and, and did the program. And I am extremely grateful that I made that decision for sure, because it has definitely just changed my life and changed my perspective in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And so on that, although in that moment I was hesitating, um, I'm so glad that I, you know, went ahead and, and did the program. So, you know, I started with your, your 90 day program yeah. and, Although some of the things are somewhat basic, you know, I, I wasn't meditating. I wasn't doing affirmations. I wasn't putting myself first. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm the, I was, or am the primary breadwinner, but I always seem to, you know, big family husband, yeah. he's an entrepreneur. There's a lot of other things pulling on me. So I just never right. seem to focus on myself. So anyway, right. um, I spent those 90 days following the program. Mm -hmm. um, some days were harder than others. Yeah. I think one of the most impactful um, exercises for me was the video to myself. Yes. Um, my future self a year from yes. now. Yep. And uh, I had to do a couple of retakes because I was getting emotional over talking to myself in the future. Yes. But um, yes. it was a great activity because. I knew I had it in me, you know, I got a lot of fight in me. I've got a lot of yeah. passion yeah. and I'd kind of lost my luster. And so trying to pep my own self up in the future was in that during that activity was hard. Um, I actually did go back and watch that video a year later yeah. and started to cry the second uh, time watching myself yeah. because everything I said became true. Yes. Yes. You know, I was telling myself I was going to be an awesome leader. I was going to get back into cardiac, which is the part that was, you know, exciting for me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was able to lead large teams. I was mm -hmm. able to make good decisions. Yeah. My expertise is valued. I was going to be with a company that had mm -hmm. a good culture and a good mission. I was going to have a boss that believed in me. <laughs> I, you know, I just was yeah. talking to myself, but yes. everything I said in the video became true. And I think what happens, you know, when people go through what I would say is a traumatic job experience. And even now I still, I had flashback today driving back from the airport because I passed my old company headquarters. Uh -huh. You know, it, it does trigger you sometimes. Yes. 
Yes. Um, but and and that trauma, I think it's real. I think it takes a while to get rid of. Yeah. I I, I mm -hmm. would tell anybody out there who's kind of going through something like this, just to first acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was trying to pretend, you know, hey, I'm I'm strong. I'm oh, cool. I'm like you know, kind of a yeah. badass. I, I it right. doesn't bother me, you know. Right. But it right. did. Yeah. Um, and it's the first time I'd kind of been knocked back on my heels to that extent. So, you know, if you can't address it, I feel like you're going to get stuck and you can't move oh, forward. Yeah. And that's what happened to me when yeah. I was trying to go through the interview process before I reached out to your program mm -hmm. was I, I had so much trauma that I couldn't, I couldn't put it aside mm -hmm. to do a proper interview with a company. Right. Yeah. And in fact, while I was going through your program is when I landed the job I'm in now mm -hmm. is I was about six weeks into your program and um, I just had a feeling this job was going to be the one. And I, I, you know, I credit it to the program because I started to get my head together. I was yeah. just showing up different. I yeah. had a different glow on my face. Yeah. Um, not the Florida sunburn today, but <laughs> you know, I, um, the inside just, out yeah it was was from the inside out so mm -hmm. you know for anybody who kind of sees the you know find your soul and then it'll fix your career like mm -hmm. me where i was like ah, i don't the two aren't connected you know yeah. uh skeptical um yeah. it really did make all the difference to me in fact i've um spoken about this program to other people that I come across who are com going through similar um situations and just highly recommend it because I wouldn't be where I am today and I wouldn't be happy. I, I'm happy. I show up to work. I'm happy. I love my team. Yeah. I love the company. I'm, yeah. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah. Um, I just wouldn't be where I'm at and my head would not be where it's at if mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't followed the program. So, you know, the kudos you to, to you creating that 90 day yeah. kind of boot camp. Yeah. Right. What did you learn the most about yourself that you had forgotten? Um, I feel like I'd learned how I am an authentic and mission driven person. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what makes me happy. I, I've, you know, having had a variety of titles, including a consultant, I wasn't always 100% hung up on the title as I was more about the mission and, and making a difference in whatever that was I was working on. Yeah. And I kind of got back to my roots of what is it that I'm about that makes me happy? Mm -hmm. And I had to go all the way back to, to childhood to kind of reroot and reground myself. Yes. Because as I was growing up, I was one of those kids, not everybody's like this, but I do know there's some people out there like me. <laughs> I 100% knew what I wanted to do when I, was going to grow up. Okay. And I knew I wanted to be a doctor. That was that was it. I didn't want to be a nurse. Okay. I didn't want to be a pharmacist. Uh-huh. I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. And I and I 100% knew that and I took classes in high school that would going to get me into pre-med program. Mm -hmm. I I wrote a a um essay that got me a Pell grant that paid for half my school. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up going to Virginia Tech pre-med. Like I was a mission driven person. Yeah. And all this came from this job I had um, it, when I was in my early high school years where I was feeding the elderly in a nursing home. Oh. And it just kind of touched me. I, I wanted yeah. to get into healthcare. And yeah. um, so I have that mission driven kind of spirit where I, I just know that I, I want to make a difference in that way. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, you know, having been through this trauma, kind of lost, mm -hmm. lost the feeling, yep. um, started to think maybe I don't even belong in this industry. Maybe, yes. maybe I need to change yeah. industries and mm -hmm. go sell cars or something, something right. totally different. You know, maybe yeah. I'll, I'll try to sell yeah. yachts to people who like boats. I don't even know how to uh -huh. drive a boat, you know? So I was just <laughs> trying to figure out like, what am right. I going to do? Because... I had the wind knocked out of my sail. So, you know, that's, that's kind of what, what made me afraid was I'd lost, I'd lost the, the Jennifer, you know, the yeah. authentic right. Jennifer that is a hundred percent passionate about making a difference. It's not just for me, it's not a cliche mm -hmm. because yeah. I will, I would choose a company and their mission over 
you know, just some kind of a, you know, job that looks good as a job yeah. requisition, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I meant it, like when I said I meant it, and I, I finally, yeah. and I found a company, funny mm -hmm. enough, going through your program, yeah. uh -huh. who knows this is true, um, yeah. it, that aligned with who I was, right? And aligned with my mission, their mission, the culture, yeah. everything was clicking almost mm -hmm. to the point where it's kind of scary that there's yeah, something that out there. So close. So yeah. close. Mm -hmm. um, and you have that feeling, you know, it's, I guess it's kind of like when you meet your partner, you, you have a feeling that might be the one. Yeah. It yeah. was one of those, you know, where you're like, I yeah. think this is going to be the job. You know, if I, if yeah. I get this job, this is definitely going to be mm -hmm. everything I was looking for. Right. And it comes across during the interview process, right? Because, yes. and I interview a lot of people, I have huge teams. So I, I'm, I just did an interview this morning, you know, so I'm used to interviewing on the interview side, not mm -hmm. always being the interviewee, but right. I can tell you when you're, when you're listening to somebody, when you're interviewing them, you can a hundred percent tell if they're passionate, if Absolutely. they're mission driven, and yeah. if they're excited or yeah. if they're just kind of going through the motions in the conversation. Right. Um, and so when I was the person being interviewed, I could see it in my own self. I could see yeah. that I was, you know, my clothes for the job was mm -hmm. passionate. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, can you tell me about the next step in the process? It was, <laughs> you know, just, I'm so excited to be here. I 100% love what this company's doing, your mission. I'm all on board. I can't mm -hmm. wait to meet the next person this afternoon during my interview. I mean, yeah. where do I sign? Like, just right. put my name down on the paper, you know? So right. it's just a different attitude. Yeah. Um, and if you're, if you're interviewing out there and you're not aligned to what makes your soul happy, you'll probably find that during the interview process, you're kind of going robotically through it yep. it's not always having the most articulate answer um it's just talking to somebody and being yourself in fact when they tell you the advice you know oh just be yourself during the interview personally i think it's great advice because you're being authentic mm -hmm. and if you're being authentic and you are showing them your real self they're either going to like you or they're not it doesn't matter at that point because you're being authentic and you want to find a good match because of your authenticity. But if you're, um, if your authentic self is damaged, bruised, yeah. hurt, unsure, that's what's showing up too. And I'm, I know that that was your pre-workshop interview experience. And, and again, we don't even, we, we think we're pushing through. We think we're smiling and being all yeah. strong and my resume is great and that but inside there's this resistance pattern of i hope i don't this isn't a mistake i hope they're going to treat me well i'm scared of this like all of that had to get healed let's just call it the word healed and then you can show up as the powerful best version of you which you totally did and i i think if i recall um this job sort of scared you because it was a startup yeah. And you're used to working for the big, the big guys, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I've worked for, you know, two out of the three largest med device companies in the world. So I, yeah. I had a lot of experience with the big guys. Yeah. I consulted for startups. I'd worked at one startup. It was a short mm -hmm. stint. They got bought out. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yeah, I was, I was kind of scared of that, right? Because mm -hmm. I was being asked to come in and build a department from mm -hmm. nothing. Right. <laughs> um, so there was nothing there in, yeah. until I got there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what what makes you scared in that situation is all that luggage I had in my head. What if right. I don't get along with my boss? What if he doesn't right. value what I'm trying yeah. to tell him with my expertise? What yeah. if there's, you know, this kind of just toxic culture or politics that are just ripe in politics, you can't get a decision made? Or what yeah. happens if all the things that happened to me, basically, yeah. in that the last job. Guard. Yeah, I thought, what if yeah. I get there and this is a scam? Like, it's not yeah. what they said it was, you know? They give me two teams, it looks like a dumpster fire. What if that <laughs> happens? You know, it's like all the, all the yeah. luggage, all the, that, yes. all the things that can happen yeah. to you um, when you take a new job, right? And part of my job trauma was I started with this other company. I didn't 
I didn't know anybody, right? It wasn't yeah. like a referral job or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was kind of straight off, you know, a recruiter, you know, kind of chasing me down type of deal. Right. And, and honestly, in hindsight, you know, they weren't honest mm -hmm. um, during the process. So mm -hmm. it makes you bring your baggage with you. You yes. know, you're like, hi, I'm going to start my new job today. And I'm going to roll in these 12 yeah, bags me... of, of uh, bad memories. Um, and we're going to start all to, they're going to sit right next to my desk. <laughs> and um, so when I'm on conference calls, they're going to, they're going to participate, you know, and that's just not the way you want to show up to an interview or to a new job. So, absolutely, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> until, yeah, until, like you said, until you can heal. Mm -hmm. And I think that healing process takes a long time. Like, again, I, I still have a little bit of it bouncing yeah. around. Yeah. But um, until you can heal, you you don't even show up for the job interview or the job. Yeah. Or taking on if you even lucky enough to land another job, right? You right. You, exactly. you can't bring it with you. No. Um, so and you have to manage. I mean, life is a complex navigation. Yeah. And managing. So you land this great job. You're 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 put into a situation where you could get triggered every single minute. Yep. You could feel inadequate every single minute. You could be scared that your boss is going to like show his real self and eventually not like you or treat you poorly. I mean, all of this, right? Yep. So some of the aspects that you learned in the workshop with us are basically how to manage that and how to continue to move through that without letting it win. So I love that visualization of the baggage sort of sitting all around you when you're on a conference call and you know <laughs> almost like it all has like these voices coming yeah. to you and being able to heal that release it let it go and claim who you are what have you what's the identity you're now living with what's 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 Jennifer all about now without most of that baggage although remnants will persist but yeah. Now, who are you? You know, I think I kind of pride myself on this and I've even gotten feedback from my team on it. They, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that they value the most about me is I'm authentic. Yep. I'm just myself and I'm my true self. I'm very honest with them. I don't, you know, I don't try to finesse things that don't need to be finessed. Mm -hmm. um, just a very, you know, straight shooter, but the, the right way. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, that's kind of what makes me who I am. Yeah. And I believe that also is one of the reasons why I've been successful since I've taken on this new job is mm -hmm. because I showed up on day one, authentic. Yes. And I've stayed authentic. Yes. In fact, it even just came up on my performance review that I am an authentic leader. Yeah. And it's not like my boss knows I was like, you know, aiming for that, but I right. came up and he appreciates it. He can see it in me yeah. and he trusts me. Uh -huh. I trust him. And I yeah. think that authenticity goes a long way because those are the kind of people, at least for me, I want to be surrounded by. If, if I, That's if good. I have that bad kind of mm -hmm. gut feeling that right. makes me uneasy, you know, my guard goes up, right? Some of that's mm -hmm. trauma, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, when you're trying to lead teams, I've got multiple teams I'm leading, you have to just show up authentic. Yes. It's a startup. So let's be right. honest about what what, yeah. what a startup looks like. It gets gritty, right? And Yeah, it's yeah. gritty and you got to have grit and you've got to mm -hmm. have a vision and you've got to mm -hmm. be passionate. You got to see past a bad day mm -hmm. and you got to understand that just because we were doing something one way yesterday doesn't mean we're going to show up tomorrow and do it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, and if I'm coaching you that today we got to change our green shoes to our red shoes and you're having issues, that's a problem because right. it's a startup. Yep. And, you know, so um, I, I think that definitely has helped recenter me. Yes. And although some days aren't that great and some days are fantastic, um, just the fact that I'm, I am being who I'm meant to be. I, mm -hmm. I don't have to kind of put the, the other Jennifer's face on in the morning. Right. It's just me yep. um, has just caused me to be happy one uh, right. successful in what I'm doing. And yes. um, I believe, you know, in this company, or even if I were to move on to, to another job in the future, 
that I'm going to hold on to this piece of me. Right. Um, because it's, it's a winner. And yeah. had I not gone through this program, I just think I probably would have devalued it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and especially from what I had just come from, it was devalued. Yeah. Uh, and I, I might've been struggling right now in my yeah. next job. So it, the, the trajectory would have been a lower level job because you would have convinced yourself that you don't want to really play that game at that level anymore. You don't need to, you don't need to put yourself through that. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I call it a backslide. That's the likely scenario. If you don't bring yourself back to life inside, believe in yourself again, knowing that other people can treat you better and well, and, and you can aggregate a team and you can be powerful again. I mean, that's really, that's really the word we're talking about. Your authentic self is powerful and you had gotten your power robbed from you. Uh, you know, when, especially when you make a reload and it's a mistake, there's yes. shame, there's guilt, there's embarrassment, there's I'm an F up, won't say that word exactly, but those are the things that, that creep in. And yep. then we start to believe that and you stick, stick it out. You try to make it better. It doesn't work out. They get bought out. You lose your job. You're like, see, I'm a, I'm a complete screw up. Yeah. And that version of Jennifer going on interviews isn't, isn't happening. I'm, yeah. I'm delighted where you are. And on a personal note, Jennifer and I got to meet each other in person last month. Yeah. And it was really great to, to see you in person and to, to, to really feel the power and the certainty. And I know that you're taking your company to heights that it would have been a rare person for them to find that has done the work that you've done over the past year with this company because they really needed someone with, with muscle, experience, expertise, certainty, confidence. Yes. You, couldn't, you, you couldn't have done this job with the broken version of Jennifer. No, I couldn't have. Honestly, I, I, I don't think I would have, you know, I do believe that your, you know, your high heightened energy levels going through your program yeah. kind of vibrates out into the universe. And then yes. you start attracting things yes. that are at your vibrational level. And I yep. don't want to yep. think I would have attracted this company to, no. you know, contact right. or right. interview me no, that's um, right. or even gone through the interview process or join the company mm. more or less get here and have that high vibrational level um mm -hmm. you know i'm just as passionate today as i was a year and something months ago that i took the yep. job yep. and it's that it's that energy level that's that's attracting us to each other kind of like a magnet mm -hmm. and even now i need to protect myself because what happens if my energy levels drop Right. I don't my that dark space comes back that I don't mm -hmm. know what to do with. You know, yeah. what happens? I have to protect myself uh, mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. And so having skills, even though, you know, I feel like I kind of knew some of this stuff, I wasn't doing it. Mm -hmm. So having the skills to know, you know, hey, I gotta put me first sometimes. Yeah. I've gotta, you know, make choices that put me first, that put my my, you know, my brain, my head first mm -hmm. i almost view right. it like my brain's my checking account and if yeah. <laughs> if Amen. it's off there's yeah. way too many withdrawals coming out yes. and not enough deposits so you totally. know i do try to meditate do mm -hmm. the affirmations yeah. um on occasion i've done the tapping when there's just something crazy happening so good. um yeah. you know i'll do walking meditations just positive mm -hmm. self-talk mm -hmm. and i also get my energy from trying to help other people you know, I feel like I have a lot to, a lot yeah. of value I can add to other people's lives, yes. either on my team or outside my team, honestly, just, yeah. um, just mm -hmm. trying to help other people navigate and let them right. know that it's okay to have, you know, stuff happen to you. Right. And it's, it's not, you know, what happened to you. It's, it's how you handle it that yes. is going to determine your success. Right. And had I continued in my my dark space that I didn't know what to do with. I don't know where I would be right now, you know, because yeah. the career coaching I was getting from the company on the severance was, what do you, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was like, right. well, I know what I don't want to do. Right. <laughs> I right. have no idea what I want yeah. to do now because I've right. been burnt, you know, on a few sides here. It, it, makes, um, you scared, it makes you scared of, of, of continuing a forward path. If you were to, talk to your self 
a year plus ago when you were sort of in that dark space and you were wondering if you could ever get back at the level of power that turns you on and that you're really built for, what would you have said to her? Like you said, you had a future self letter, which I love watching those when we, when we bring a gal into the workshop, but what would you now say to that hurt Jennifer? You know, I would just say that just because somebody doesn't see the value in what you bring to the table mm -hmm. does not mean that you don't bring value to the table. Mm -hmm. And as much as you wanna always take the feedback, there comes a point where you have to draw the line between mm -hmm. feedback that's actually not good feedback. It's right. harmful, it's detrimental to yeah. you and it's bad feedback. And mm -hmm. that's their own issues, right? Yes. Th those are, and I, I want to be the accountable, coachable person, but some of the feedback I received was just th did not belong in my life. Yes. And it came from, I'll just say the 1950s. Yes. So it, you know, you do have to be open eyed enough to see the leaders even above you. Mm -hmm. and call it out maybe not to their face but right. you got to yep. call it out and say that is not who i am right. that is not what i'm about mm -hmm. i am not okay with it yes and and even if you can't exit immediately the part of what i didn't do that i should have done that mm -hmm. what i would tell myself now is i knew within a week of taking that job it was not the right job for me uh-huh and I stayed. I stayed, like you said, because I was the primary breadwinner. I moved the entire family. Yep. My husband quit his corporate job to become an entrepreneur. I had mm -hmm. kids in tow. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a hot mess for me yeah. to leave. I would have yeah. owed money back on the reload for the first uh -huh. 12 months. Uh -huh. I felt 100% responsible yes. for my family and for making that decision. Yes. And so because of those factors, even though I knew a week into it, I could have easily called my other job back at that point and asked for forgiveness. They would have a hundred percent taken me back. Yeah. I didn't because I felt so responsible for the choices mm -hmm. I had just made yeah. that I stayed and I right. stayed to take, to end up receiving job trauma, bad feedback, doubting my capabilities as a as a leader as an expert in what I do yeah. and such bad self-talk started to come out because I was in survival mode yes and and when I look back at who I was when I showed up before I took that job which was who I am today yeah. versus who I came out the shoot two years later yes I was not even the same person because I tolerated it and i tolerated it you yeah. know i can't be mad at myself for tolerating it but if i were to give myself advice or anybody out there who's going through something like this is just admit it that it's not for you it's not the yeah. right fit you're in the you know you're in the wrong garden you're not going to grow right and you got to just get, you got to get going on looking for a job networking recruiting finding yourself again i lost myself yep. and put a lot of emphasis on finding yourself first and then looking for the job but if if you can have the option to exit get the heck out of there because right. the my number one regret in that whole process was that for some reason in my head i thought i was stronger than it and i was going to prove a point to somebody about right. something yeah now you know and i wasn't going to quit i wasn't a quitter yeah. Yeah, um, right. That's and right. I, although I, you know, I got a severance cause I didn't quit, you know, they, they let me go. Uh, I don't know in hindsight, like, did I really prove a point was to anybody? Was that really worth it? Right. Was it worth it? Cause I kind of, right. I lost a piece of myself in yeah. that and that was not worth it. And when we get so determined to prove that we aren't a quitter, to prove that we're not going to let them win, we lose sight of what's possible. So it's certainly my desire for women to find me and reach out for the help before they stay in the boiling water too long. Um, I just had the opportunity to meet with 16 of our clients in the Washington DC area. We had a meetup and every single one of them as we were going around the room said, I was at my darkest place. I was at my darkest place. I wish I would have found you years before. And so the thing is that sometimes as human beings, we have to be so hurt and broken to get help. So 
to me, the thing is, and I had to go through breast cancer to figure this whole thing out for myself, get help earlier. You didn't have a way out is why you stayed as well. Yeah. You didn't have a way out. There was no path of Jennifer recovering her, her sense of self and exiting. It's like, yeah. I made this decision. I have to stick with it. And that's simply not true. But where are you going to go from that point? You look like there's no door. There's no exit. Mm -hmm. So we, we came across each other when, when it was divinely orchestrated. Cool. Okay. Now you're a total badass in your new company, setting the tone, setting the stage, building for the future, building your own career for the future. And let's just say it this way. You've brought your soul back alive. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now you're totally owning your, your truth, your power. And you see that there's much more capacity and capability as you continue to grow. And you're, I know you're loving this company. I know you're loving building it. And I know you're loving being sort of hands-on and, and, and getting at it. Um, what's in store for your future? I'm glad you asked that question, you know, because had I not gone through this, I, I honestly, when I was talking to that career coach, I couldn't, I couldn't answer the question, what do I want to do when I grow up? Right. right? Yeah. Now yeah. I've gone through it. I've got a great job. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking about, is this it? Like, do I, you know, do I right. stay here for the next 20 years and then tap mm -hmm. out? Like, yeah. or am I, am I bigger than this role that I mm -hmm. took? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so my, I'm starting to think about, you know, hey, I launched a department here on the service side. I've never launched a service department before. It actually wasn't that hard. You know why? Because I've launched multiple departments before. Yeah, yeah. And I already knew how to do it. I just wasn't giving myself credit, right? So uh -huh. I've gone through this process a few times. Now I'm thinking, what else can I do? Right. Does it stop here? You know, yeah. so now I'm now I'm in a in a in a mental headspace where I'm thinking, I could do so much more than this, you know, and I initially was thinking funny enough that I wanted to get back into a sales director role, right? Because okay. I love the sales side of things, but I've already been a sales director. Yeah. Why do I need to do that twice? Right. So now it's then, building. Yeah. yeah so, you know, and then I thought maybe I'll be the VP of education because I've been doing that for 15 years. I'm really good at it. Right. right. And I thought, no, that's not what I want to do either. <laughs> and then it finally hit me, right, after kind of bouncing these ideas around, what else can I do and accomplish in this world? You know, my, my universe is expanding. It's kind of exciting yeah. To, yeah. to be in that moment. But no, I am capable of getting to the general manager level right. and running 5, 10, 15 different departments because yeah. I understand how every single one of them work. So why yeah. would I settle yeah. for just getting back into a sales director role because I'm comfortable there and I can, you know, yeah. I can, I can right spin on. some plates and make some revenue. Right. Like, why am I right. doing that again? Yes. Um, and so had I not been in the, you know, I want to expand, I want to see what else I can accomplish. I believe in mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. and I know I can lead teams and people and inspire others to, to follow. Mm -hmm. Why, why would I just settle for, you know, just kind of hanging, hanging right where on. I'm at for the next 10 years, right? Because right. I love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But can, and can I even accomplish it where I'm at? You know, can I continue to take on additional responsibilities where I'm at? I've got people who believe in me yeah. or do I, you know, do I kind of grow for a bit here, yeah. be happy and then start to think about what else can I accomplish? But I'm at that point now. And if you, if you interviewed me a year ago, right now, I wouldn't be saying any of these things because I just, I just didn't have the right headspace yeah. to do it. Just wanted a job and to get back on track. So the, 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 the storyline here to me and talking with you again, and I've so enjoyed coaching you is from job trauma to powerhouse from job trauma to, I can run the whole damn thing. Thank you very much. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah, this is so yeah. good. So good. And, you know, you said it a little bit, but I, I also want to acknowledge the fact that you're, you're also uh, a, a great mom. You're a great partner to your husband who has his own dreams and aspirations. And together you're building something that's more of a family legacy and more of a enterprise for who your family is. And that's big thinking. And that's only capable when you're in your soul's truth and, and that power. 
Yeah, so because they, because he he left corporate because he was passionate about it, being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And if I wasn't so mission driven and passionate, knowing what makes me happy, yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure I would have been on board to just let him mic drop it after 23 years and free fall <laughs> for a bit. Um, so right. yeah, it it takes it takes a lot of courage and yes. a lot of acknowledgments across the board. So, yeah. and so hopefully, good. you know, I'll I'll pass on this thinking to my kids. Yes, right? exactly. And and exactly. let them know that they can do whatever they set their mind to. That's right. It's all it's all uh, there's all potential in the world, and and we just have to tap into that in order to succeed. I am so happy for who you are. I'm so happy you recovered yourself. And then built yourself even to a higher level of aspiration and and potential. I can't wait to see what's next in the Jennifer E. Marini uh, next chapter, next book that yeah. you're you're writing uh, of your future. And I really, really appreciate you sharing your story so that other women who may be feeling like they're not in the right job, they've been disrespected, they've been told to shut up and shut down. I certainly have that experience in my career as well. And to know that you're not, you don't need to stay in those situations. But hey, ladies, reach out and get the advice and expertise before you bake in it too long and it becomes something that you're convinced that's who you are. So I'm glad you were able to bounce off of job loss, job trauma, Jennifer, and really rise up. Uh, I'm, I'm just delighted to always talk to you. And we had a chance to, like I said, meet in person last month. And it's just really great to see you soar in this world. And I know the world's better because you're back. So thanks yes. a lot for everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Folks, Jennifer's story might sound like yours. I know many aspects of it sound like my story. And when you actually claim, you know what, I don't know my way out of this box. I don't know my way out of this situation. You can claim your future. We do the work from the inside out. And Jennifer's story is exactly why. Mofall.com slash talk. Let's get your career clarity call going. It is the way for us to help you see what's going on and whether we can help you or not. And if we can, like Jennifer said, we'll, we'll fight for you to get the expertise and the coaching so you can get your life back, your soul back and have a great career. We'll see you next time. This is Coach Mo Fall. And again, thank you, Jennifer, mofall.com and everywhere on social media. Thank you.